Okay, so let's take a look at uh, how we can go about positioning APDIV tags. So in this video, I'm going to go over relative versus absolute positioning of div tags. And we're going to look at how we can get a little bit more flexibility when we're creating these div tags, these boxes on our site. And we're going to also go over nesting. And we're going to look at putting tags within tags and creating a parent tag and a child tag. So let's begin. Okay, so our div tags. We start and we're gonna just <clears throat> insert a div tag and let's actually make it after the tag. I'm gonna make it after, up. I wanna make it actually after my uh, nav bar tag. So let's see, and why, I don't know why that's not showing up, but why don't we come on in to split maybe because it's a library item. And let's come after our div tag, okay? And let's come back into the design and let's insert it now. Now, what I'm doing here is I am going this way because I can now just say put it at the insertion point and then that will be fine. So we'll say insert div tag. We can say that. Let's just see for one minute after tag. Okay, for whatever reason, and probably because of where it's actually drawn. Okay, All right, I'm not going to worry about it right now. All right, so we're going to say at insertion point. Okay, and that is where the cursor is in the type. All right, one more time, third time's a charm. At insertion point, and I'm going to name this uh, relative. Okay, relative position. It's gonna be my first box. Okay, so I'm gonna come on in. We're gonna actually let's put this onto our web design CSS. We're gonna say okay. All right, let's actually make a box and let's make this box. Let's make it about 80 pixels. Actually, a little bit bigger. Better yet, let's make it 25% of our page and of the width of our page. And then let's make this. Let's make this. We'll say. 400, 400 pixels high. Now let's add a little bit of a margin. Uh, let's add a left margin of 5%. And then we'll leave the rest of them off. Now let's come on in and let's put in a background color. Let's make a color. There we go. And now this is what else we're going to do. That we're going to come to our positioning and we are going to make it relative. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to make this the parent tag. And what I'm going to do with the parent tag is I'm going to embed, I'm going to actually create a child tag inside of the parent tag and I'll change that positioning. Okay, this will all make sense in one minute. Let's keep moving. So I'm making this position relative. Now the reason why it's going to be relative is because it's going to be able to adjust and move as my page changes. Alright, so there's my first one. Content for relative goes here. Okay, and we could also say this is the parent tag. Now, this is what I'm going to do next. What I want to do now is I want to take a tag and I want to put it right over top of this one and off to the side. So how do I go about doing that? How do I go about putting one tag on top of another and moving them over? Well, the way that we can do that is through nesting the tags. Okay, so we come into our split view. Let's come on into the code. All right, and I'm going to name this one. Let's name it relative. Actually, I'm going to name it relative positioning parent tag. Okay, now I can refresh this if I'd like. Refresh. All right, but I still have my cursor right here, and I want to keep this here for a minute because I'm going to now insert my next div tag inside of this tag, okay? So that would be uh, a nested tag. That's what nesting refers to, one tag within another. Um, and we'll see what that's gonna look like. Let's go back to design view and let's come to our insert panel. Let's say insert div tag again. Now, we could say an insertion point because we know that it's there, but we could also say before end of tag and we want it to be before the end of the relative tag. All right, and we're going to name this one. Let's name this one absolutes. This one's going to be our absolute one. Okay, we're going to attach it to this 
and let's make it a size. Let's say we want it to be, let's give it, this is 150 pixels by 200 pixels. Let's see, I don't need to do that. Okay, by 200 pixels. Now, let's, let's give it a border too, so why not? So we could say style, let's go for dotted. Let's make the width medium and let's add a color. Hmm, all these colors to choose from. Okay, uh, and let's actually give it a background color too. Why not? Okay, now when we come to our positioning, what we want to do is we're going to make this absolute. And we're going to come back and check the Z index in a minute. The Z index. Um, has to do when, if we want one object to be on top of another, we can come in and the higher the Z index, the higher it is, that will be the one up on top. So if one had a Z index of 10, and another had the one a Z index of two, the one that had the Z index of 10 would be up on the top. But let's see what happens if we don't do anything with that, okay? We can see our placement is, um, you know, empty. All right, so let's see what happens. This is inside of this tag, so it's not going to start all the way over here. It's actually going to be inside of this. And the, the pixels will be based on what this is. So let's take a look and see where it places it. We'll say OK. OK. OK, and there it is. Here is our tag. And what it is, it ends up being 150 pixels from the start of this tag right here. All right, so this tag was 392, all right? And we can subtract this. We could figure out the math if we'd like, and it's moved over to here. Now, this is the beauty of this. This one was on top of this, but if we wanted the other one to be on top, we could do something I'm gonna show you in one minute. Now, what's great about an absolute tag is, well, let's actually preview this first. We come in, preview in Firefox, save, Okay, there it is. Now it's nested inside. So see what happens as we move this, they're moving together. Okay, because it's got that parent-child relationship. It's nested, they're moving together. Now, let's take a look at something else that's really cool that we can do. Okay, I can take this and if I click like this and I get my box, I can actually move this over. And I could even make it a little bit bigger. Very cool. All right, but now let's take a look and see what happens. We can see that our width and our height has changed. Now let's come into our CSS styles and see what's happened over here. Okay, so I want to um, edit this. Let's see what happened to the positioning. So we can see the block. Okay, let's come to positioning. Now we can see instead of now it's 317 pixels from the left, and it's 23 um, right in here. We see it's 23 from the top, and it's 23 from the top of this tag. Okay, does that make sense from this tag? All right, let's take a look. Let's actually take this and let's move it over. And if we were to line it up right to here, and then if we were to come in and edit the rule, and look at the positioning, we can see that it's, th again, the pixels are based on where this is, okay? So what's great about this, we can have all of these different tags. If we nest them, we can move them around and they all will fall in place based on the parent tag. All right, let's name this one. Let's say um, this one is my absolute positioning and it's my child tag. All right, so let's take a look. Let's preview this in Firefox. Save, yes. All right, and it moved. We didn't want that to happen, but it did. All right, let's see what's happening here. All right, now that may actually have to do with the Z index. So let's take a look and see if we can fix that. Next thing we want to take a look at is the Z index. Theme. This one is up on top. All right, so we want to change the Z index of this. We can get, let's put the Z index at four, okay? And now let's come on into the relative position. Now, a lot of times what you might want to do is, um, 
If you're going to use this, the relative stuff, what I would recommend is that you put in exact pixels uh, because sometimes with the percentages, things will change. And when you work with percentages, especially for the actual boxes, um, the percentages are figured out by that browser, so they might not always float together. All right, so what I did for the relative positioning was this box in here, uh, relative. Let's see, let's click it like this. Let's click this over here. Let's get that. Let's click this guy. All right, so what we want to do is come on in. Let's take a look at the CSS for this relative. Okay, let's edit the CSS. And what I have, what I did was I changed it to a width of 350 pixels by 400 pixels. Now, I want it 5% from the left. So that we have there. And now when we preview this, in Firefox, we can see that this, these tags will move together. And that's what we want. We want them to move together so that parent, child, 